أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا خذنا ميساق بني إسرائيل لا تعبدون إلا الله وبالوالدين إحسانا لا تعبدون إلا الله وبالوالدين إحسانا وذي القربى واليتابى والمساكين وقولوا للناس حسنا وقولوا للناس حسنا واقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة ثم توليتم إلا قليلا منكم وأنتم معرضون وإذا خذنا ميساقكم لا تسفكون دماءكم ولا تخرجون أنفسكم من دياركم ثم أقررتم وأنتم تشهدون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آنا الليل وآنا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين آمين يا برادرز و سيسترز السلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Last night as you must be remembering we read the first nine sections of Surah Al-Baqarah Today we are starting with the tenth section I think it will be beneficial if you recall a few things. I told you that this biggest surah of the Quran and the greatest surah as well, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the kulli shayin sinamul wa sinamul Quran is surah al-Baqarah. Everything has a top, and the top of the Quran is surah al-Baqarah. It can be divided into two parts, nearly equal parts. In the first part, the address is basically to the former Muslim Ummah, that is Bani Israel. In the second part, the address is totally to the Muslim Ummah, present Muslim Ummah, that is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first part comprises of 18 sections and 152 ayat. While the second part consists of 22 sections, but the number of ayat is 134. The first half then can be divided into three parts. The first four sections, they are preliminary. And I told you, it can be said that they contain a summary and gist of the whole of the Makki Quran, which was revealed before Surah Al-Baqarah. Two-thirds of the Quran is Makki. And Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed at Medina. So actually two-thirds of the Qur'an had already been revealed. So a gist and summary of that has been placed in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Then ten sections consist of direct address. Ya Bani Israel, Ya Bani Israel, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab. This is the direct address to the former Muslim Ummah, that is Bani Israel. Then the four next sections. They may be called tahwili because the change of the direction of the qibla in the prayer, which was a symbol of the change of the ummah, that the former Muslim ummah was deposed from that position which it occupied for 2,000 long years. 
and the new Muslim Ummah, that is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is taking that place, is being installed in that position. Now the first four rukus also, although I told you that they are preliminary and they contain a gist and summary of the Makki Quran, but we find references to the Jews in those four sections also. For example, you must be remembering that the second section that is applicable equally to the Munafiqeen as well as the Jews. In the fourth section again, that we find in the story of Iblis and Adam, a very subtle resemblance has been given that the attitude of the Jews of Medina towards Muhammad sallallahu was the same as was the attitude of Iblis, Shaitan, towards Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Because he also refused to prostrate before Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Out of jealousy. There was no other reason. Out of his pride, because he was proud of himself. And he was jealous of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He didn't bow down as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. The same was the case of the Jews. They recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all right. They recognized him. Yarifunahu kama yarifun abnahum. This ayah we shall read today. But they didn't accept him. They didn't believe in him. And that was also absolutely out of jealousy. Sheer jealousy and nothing else. So there are subtle references towards Jews in those four sections also. Then you know, the address to the former Muslim Ummah, I told you, there must be made a very clear distinction that the first section, that is the fifth one, comprising of seven ayat, this consists of an invitation to the former Muslim Ummah to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati alamtu alaykum wa awfu bi ahdi ufi bi ahdikum wa yaya farhabun wa aminu bima anzaltu musaddiqan luba ma'akum wa la takunu awwala kafirin bi wa la tashtaru bi ayati samanan qalilan wa yaya farhabun From the next, that is the sixth section, now it's a very long charge sheet against the former Muslim Ummah that we are still studying. But while we are studying this charge sheet, one point must be kept in view. It is a charge sheet against the former Muslim Ummah, but it is also simultaneously a forewarning for the Muslim Ummah, for the new Muslim Ummah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These were the wrong paths which were treaded by the former Muslim Ummah. They committed these mistakes. They went astray in such and such ways. Lest you should also, O oh Muslims, O oh Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lest you should also follow the same path. You may go in their footsteps. So it was a forewarning to the Muslim Ummah. And let me quote here a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He once said to the companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, لَتَتَّبِعُنَّ سُنَنَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ You will definitely follow in the footsteps of the former Muslim Ummah, who were before you. Qida shibrim be shibrim, bayadan be yadin. Equally, each hand in place of a hand, and each arm in place of an arm. It's, you know, a sort of muhavara, a usage in, in Arabic language, to show the similarity of something. You will be following absolutely, completely the, the people who were before you. And if they entered the hole of a, of a desert lizard, you will also enter it. And if there was someone from among the former Muslims who committed adultery with his mother, someone must be within you also who will do the same. Now the companions, you know, they were astonished and they asked, Whom do you mean of Prophet Sallallahu a Yahud wa Nasara? And he replied, Who else? You will follow in the footsteps of the Jews and the Christians. So actually we should see and we should read between the lines that the same things happen to the Muslims. The same wishful thinking. We are the blessed people because we are the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We must be saved. We cannot be kept in the fire of hell for, 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 for all times to come, for eternity. 
ऑल दीज थिंग्स यू नो दिस दी सेम विशफुल थिंकिंग तिलका अमानी यू हम कुल हाथ बुरहाना को इन कुल तुम सादकीन एंड लेट मी कोट हियर दी आया दैट कम्स इन द एंड ऑफ द सेवेंथ सेक्शन एक्चुअली दिस आया इज एप्लीकेबल टू अस टूडे एंड प्रैक्टिकली इट इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल टू द ज्यूज ऑफ टूडे जोरबक अल मुजिल्लत वल मस्कनत व बाऊ बेगर बिन अल्लाह ह्यूमिलिएशन वॉज हीप अपॉन दम एंड देव दे गॉट द रैथ ऑफ अल्लाह सुबान वाला दे वर पनिश लाइक एनी थिंग आर दे ज्यूज टूडे गेटिंग द रैथ ऑफ अल्लाह आर दे ह्यूमिलिएटेड इन द वर्ल्ड दे आर कंट्रोलिंग द सोल सुप्रीम पावर ऑन अर्थ द पॉलिसीज ऑफ द सोल सुप्रीम पावर ऑफ अर्थ इज इन देंड ऑफ द ज्यूज दे वायरस दे आर कंट्रोलिंग द इकोनॉमी ऑफ द होल ऑफ द ग्लोब only about 14 or 15 15 million people but you know the influence they have how much authority they command in the whole of the world by we although we are more than a billion but what's the condition humiliation no say in the international affairs nobody concerns us zorebat alayhi muzillatu wal maskaratu wa ba'u bi ghadab min allah These words depict the real condition of the Muslim Ummah today, not of the former Muslim Ummah. In the same way, we read, you know, the last ayah that we studied last night. That people think that we cannot, this the fire of hell will not touch us, save for a few days. Then Tamar Sallallahu Illa Ayamu Maduda. Now these are the same, you know, dogmas and aqidas that we have today. Because we are born Muslims, because we say kalma, so we shall anyhow be rescued, and we shall be taken out. Even if we are thrown in the hell, we will be taken out. Although a part of this is correct, if somebody has real iman, real faith, conviction in the heart, it is the agreed upon article of faith among the Muslims, all the sects of Muslims, that at one time he will be taken out from the hell. But that also, the, to the person who has a real faith, not just a verbal attestation. The verbal attestation was done by the Bunafiqin of Medina. They also said the Shahada: "Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah." And Quran says that they will dwell in the fire of hell forever. Inna al-Munafiqin fi darki dasfar bin al-Nar. So these are all things which we should understand. And now. We proceed further. Wahid Akhazna Misa ka Bani Israel, and just recall the time when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, the progeny of Israel, and that is Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. What was that covenant? This this ayah is very important. It gives the gist of the deen of Allah that has been the same from the very beginning. What are the basic articles of the Deen of Allah? Number one, La Taabudu La Ilaha Illallah. You will not worship anybody, anything except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wa Bil Walidain Ihsana. Number two, you must be respectful to and good in behavior towards your parents. Number three, Wa Zil Qurba Wa Al Yatama Wa Al Masakin. And you should be doing good. To your relatives and the orphans and the poor. Number four, wa kulu lil nasi husna. Say to the people whatever is good. Talk to them gently and join them towards whatever is good. And as the reverse of it, forbid them from whatever is wrong, from whatever is evil and bad. Number five, waqi musalla. Establish this compulsory prayer five times a day. Pay the zakah and pay the obligatory charity. Pay the zakah regularly. Summa tawalnatu. This was the covenant. This was the misaq. It misa. This misaq was taken by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from the former Muslim Ummah. But now the charge is summa tawallay tu mila kalila minku. Then you turned your backs towards this misaq, towards this covenant, 
except a few among you. Only a few remained strict and true to this covenant. All of the rest abrogated. Bantu Moridun, while you were averse, you turned your backs and went away. Now another Misak. This was the basic Misak, you know, and this I told you is the gist of the deen of Allah. These are the headings under which you can count all the teachings of the deen of Allah. And just recall when we took the covenant from you, you will not shed your blood. What does it mean? You will not shed the blood of each other because you are one ummah. Now a person, an individual belonging to an ummah, if he kills a person belonging to the same ummah, it is as if he has shed his own blood. He has killed himself. You will not shed the blood of each other. And you will not expel each other from their homes, fighting each other. Because you know after Hazrat Moses alayhi salatu was salam, when Bani Israel entered Palestine, they conquered it. But they didn't establish one central government. They divided the whole country into twelve small states. Each tribe had its own state, small states. And then there was a quarrel in, they were infighting, they were quarreling with each other. And then they were invoking and seeking the help of the others against each other. This is what happened in India before the Britishers came there. The whole of the country was divided into very small, you know, states and they were fighting each other and the Britishers took advantage of their enmities and that is how they could conquer this whole, this big subcontinent. A few thousand of them, they conquered the whole of the country because there was infighting. So that happened for about 300 years after Hazrat A. Musa alayhi salatu was salam. They were divided among themselves, they had small states, they were fighting each other and when someone attacked the other state, they expelled people from their, from their state. So that they have been doing, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden them from doing so and taken the covenant. Then you promised that you will abide by this covenant and you are witnesses to it, that you promised, you ratified the treaty. You ratified the covenant. Then it is you who have been killing each other. And expelling, turning out some of your people from their homes. And you have been having aggression on them and helping the enemies. Tazahrun Muzahara Babu Bufala, it is helping each other against someone. Tazahrun Aleh Bilis Mewaludwan, with sin and aggression. Wahi Yatu Kum Osara. There was another article of the covenant. That whenever you find a Jew with person of your own community, as a captive anywhere, you must get him free by paying the ransom. This was again an article of the Sharia. Just as you know, it should be absolutely logical that we, if we find any Muslim in bondage and he is captive somewhere and we can afford to buy for him the freedom, to pay the money of ransom and get him free, we should do it as Muslims. So that was another article of the covenant that was taken from them. But now what happened? Now they were acting upon this article. When the same people whom they had themselves turned out from their homes, when they came to them as captives, now they remembered the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, we had promised that whenever we shall find a Jew in bondage or as a captive, we must get him free by paying the ransom. So, so they were paying the ransom and getting them free. Now this was their attitude. 
وہیں یاسوکم یا تو کم اسارا تو فادو ہوں وہ ہوا محرم علیکم اخراج ہوں آل دو اٹ واز بینڈ فار یو اٹ واز حرام فار یو ٹو ایکسپیل دم فرام دیئر ہومس ہیڈ یو ناٹ ایکسپیل دم فرام دیئر ہومس دے وڈ ناٹ ہیو بیکم کیپٹو یو ایکسپیل دم اینڈ ہیئر یو کنٹروین دی کامنٹ بٹ وین دے کیم ایز کیپٹو ناؤ یو آر وینسنگ دم So actually, what does it mean? You are acting upon a part of the deen, part of the covenant, and you are breaking the other part. Now, this is actually a fatu menun abe bazi kitab e watak furun abe baz. These words are most profound. They are applicable to each of us today. Each of us. Not a single Muslim I can find at least. who is free from this attitude afatu minuna bi ba'dil kitab so do you accept a part of our law our book wa takfuruna bi ba's and reject the other what are we doing today are we acting upon the whole of the deen no part of the deen pray to allah pay the zakah but go in business with interest is all right do everything which is haram we are doing it not a single country in the whole of the muslim world all the number of the countries might be exceeding 50 or 60 any country where there is no interest no riba then the economy everywhere is based on riba any country where the deen of allah is implemented in toto nan So what are we doing? And you here are faithful to the American Constitution. What is that Constitution? Is it Islamic? At least I in Pakistan have a solace that in Pakistan Constitution we have that objective resolution, which declares that sovereignty is for Allah, and the authority that we hold is a delegated authority only. At least this is there, although these are words only. we are not practicing it but you know at least the words are there just as we utter the shahada ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah we are not practicing according to the shahada but we are muslims on the basis of this shahada but the whole of the rest of the muslim world no way the constitution doesn't provide it that we accept allah as our sovereign sovereignty belongs to him سرور زیبا فقط اس ذات بے ہمتا کو ہے حکمراں ہے ایک وہی باقی بتانے حاضری نو ایئر سو دس از ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ یو نو دی ایگزامپل از ٹیکن فرام دی جیوز بٹ دی ہول اسٹوری از ایپلیکیبل ٹو اس خوش طرح باشد کے سر دل بران گفت آیت در حدیث دیگران اسٹوری از آف دی اولڈر امہ بٹ ایکچولی از ایپلیکیبل فلی ٹو دی ٹو دی مسلم امہ افتو منون ابی باز ان کتاب و تک فرون ابی باز سو ڈو یو ایکسپٹ اینڈ بلیو ان پارٹ آف دی بک پارٹ آف دی شریا اینڈ یو ریجیکٹ اینڈ ڈس بلیو دی ریسٹ آف اٹ فما جزا میا فل و ظال کم ان کم سو دیر کین بی نو پنشمنٹ فار دوز ہو ٹیک ٹو دس ایٹیچیوڈ فرام امنگس یو اللہ خز یون فل حیات دنیا except that they should be put to extreme humiliation in the world in this world in the life of this world and that is what we are experiencing extreme humiliation why hai aaj kyon zaleel ke kal tak na thi pasand gustakhi e farishta hamari janab mein why at least there is a cause and the cause is the same because we have accepted the faith islam deen only partially illa khizun fi hayat e dunya بیوم القیامت یور دورا الاشد العصاب اور دی ڈے آف ججمنٹ دے ول بی تھرون ان دی ورسٹ پنشمنٹ ان دی موسٹ گریوس ٹارمنٹ وم اللہ غافل لما تعملون اینڈ ڈونٹ تھنک دیٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی از ان اویئرز اف وٹ یو ار ڈوئنگ اولا ایک الذی نشترب الضلال نشترب الحیات الدنیا بالآخرہ دے ار دی پیپل ہو ہیو پرچیزڈ دس دس لائف اف دس ورلڈ in exchange for the life of hereafter they have given away the life of hereafter and they have preferred and chosen the life of this this world fala yukhaffafu anhum al azab 
so the torment shall not be lightened or decreased for them. Walahum yunsaroon, nor they will be able to get any help from any way. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَقَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ And verily, we gave to Moses the book, that is Torah, وَقَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ And we followed him up with a succession of messengers, prophets after prophets, a chain, continuous chain of prophets after Moses till Jesus. For fourteen hundred long years, this chain of prophethood never broke. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet says, كُلَّمَا هَلَكَ نَبِيٌّ خَلَفَهُ نَبِيٌّ كَانَتْ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ تَسْوُسُهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ كُلَّمَا هَلَكَ نَبِيٌّ خَلَفَهُ نَبِيٌّ The community affairs and the politics, political affairs of Bani Israel were, hands, were in the hands of the Prophets. Whenever a Prophet died, another Prophet was the Khalif. He took his place. So continuous change. ثُمَّ قَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ and now the last, end of the chain, وَآتَيْنَا عِيْسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And we gave to Jesus, to Isa, son of Mary, Maryam, عليهم الصلاة والسلام, الْبَيِّنَاتِ Clear signs, clear proofs. And here it means the miracles. The biggest miracles, you know, which can be seen through these senses. They were given to Hazrat Masih, عليه الصلاة والسلام. بَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ And we supported him and helped him with the pure spirit of Ruh al-Qudus. And it means Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. أَفَكُلَّبَا جَاكُمْ رَسُولٌ So what? Whenever there came a Rasool, there came a Prophet, بِمَا لَا تَهْوَا أَنفُسُكُمْ with something that you didn't like, your souls didn't approve, with some teaching which was not liked by you, istak bartum, you became arrogant, you didn't accept, for fariqan kazabtum, some of them, some of those prophets, you only belied them, you only disbelieved them, for fariqan taktulun, and some of them you have been killing and murdering. As you know, they murdered Hazrat Yahya alayhi salatu wa salam, John the Baptist, the cry from the wilderness according to the Bible, Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam, and he was, he was killed by the Jew king of that time. And the Jews, they decreed that Jesus must be hanged, crucified, although it's a different story what Allah Ta'ala did with him, with him, but they at least tried to do the same. They killed in the same manner Hazrat Zakriya alayhi salatu wa salam for fariqan kazzabtun wa fariqan taqtulun. As I told you, there is a long charge sheet against our Jews, against the Asfar al-Muslim Ummah, as a result of which they were deposed from that position, high position. وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف And they said, actually, in mocking at the Muslims and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف our hearts are wrapped up. Our hearts are secure. What did they mean by this? Well, your preaching will have no effect on us. Don't think you can convince us. Keep your preaching with you. It's not going to affect our hearts. Our hearts are fortified. You know, they are secure. Kulubana wolf. Now, what are the comments by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? بَلَّانَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ Actually, the condition is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed them. They are under the curse and lana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They kufre him due to their disbelieving. فَقَلِيلًا مَا يُمِنُونَ And it is correct that a very few among them will come to believe and join the, this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَمَّا جَاهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And when a book came to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now although this is a generalized word, it can mean Qur'an also, it can mean Injil also, whenever a book came to them. But you know most of the Mufassirin think that here Qur'an is being mentioned. وَلَمَّا جَاهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ When a book from Allah has come to them, مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ 
and it is confirming that which is with them. It is accepting the Torah was also book of Allah, which He gave to Moses. وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And they were at the, before that time, they were invoking Allah's blessings, that that last prophet now should be sent, so that with his help we can defeat our enemies, we can defeat the disbelievers, عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Because they, they had this tradition in their books, that when the last prophet would come, then you know his deen will be supreme over all the other religions. So they were waiting. And they used to say to the people of Aus and Khadraj in Medina, that presently you can defeat us. But you know when that prophet comes, we shall fight you being his companions. With his help we shall defeat you. But when that Prophet came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلَمَّا جَاهُمْ مَا عَرَفُوا when, when he came to them, whom, he, whom they recognized, that he is the Prophet for whom we were waiting. He is that Prophet. مَا عَرَفُوا كَفَرُوا بِهِ But they disbelieved him, they rejected him, they refused to believe in him. فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Again, the same comments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is, there is curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these disbelievers. Bad is the thing for which they have bartered their souls. That they are disbelieving, they are rejecting. That thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, they are rejecting Qur'an. They are rejecting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the reason of rejecting is بَغْيًا أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ Grudging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down this blessing to whom He willed, to whom He chose. He thought that that Prophet will also be from among the Jews. They thought. They thought because after, you know, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, all the prophets came in the progeny of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, accepting only one or two. The only exceptions are Hazrat Ishaib alayhi salatu was salam, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. All the rest of the prophets and messengers, they came in the progeny, in the children, in the tribes that were raised from the children of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. So they thought that this is our exclusive proprietorship. This will remain with us. And the last prophet will also be from among us, from amongst us. But when Allah chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was from Bani Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam. He was not you. He was not from the progeny of Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam. So that was the only reason. Baghiyan, they were grudging it. أَنْ يُنَزْدِرَ اللَّهُ بِنْ فَصْدِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down from His blessings to whom He liked from His bondsmen. فَبَاوُ بِغَضَبٍ عَلَى غَضَبٍ So they drew upon themselves wrath after wrath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ And for these disbelievers who have rejected the deen of Allah, who have rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who have rejected Qur'an, for them is the punishment which is disgracing. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا بِمَا عَنَ اللَّهِ And when it is said to them, come to believe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. قَالُوا نُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا عُنزِلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ They say, we believe only on those things which were sent to us. وَيَكْفُرُونَ بِمَا وَرَا And they disbelieve and reject the rest. Everything that is beyond it, all that was given to us, to Moses, to all the Hebrew prophets, only we accept that. We need nothing more. They, they are disbelieving the rest. Although it is the truth, this Quran is the truth. This has been sent down by the same Allah who sent, who sent down Torah and Injil. And Musaddiq al-Nimam it is confirming that which is with them, that is Torah and Injil. 
قل فلم تقتلون انبیاء الله من قبل ان كنتم مؤمنين لا هو محمد اس بن صلى الله عليه وسلم so why have you been killing the prophets you say whatever was given to our prophets we believe in it but this is your history you yourself tell that you killed jo yahya alai salatu wassalam you killed zakaria alai salatu wassalam so why have you been killing the and murdering the prophets of allah in kuntum mu'minin if you are truthful if you are believers if you believed in them if you believed in the books that were sent on them why did you kill them wa laqad ja'akum musa bil bayyinat and musa had come to you with clear proofs and signs summa taqatulul ijla min ba'dihi but when he left you took to the worship of kaf wa antum zalimun and you were very unjust you were the polytheists you became mushrik and murtad wa iza khadna misaqakum wa rafa'na fawqakum at-tur and we call again the moment when we took the covenant from you and we raised the bound over your heads khudu ma atainakum bi quwwatin and we said now hold fast to what we have given to you with your full force the quwwatin hold fast to it now you must cling to this this torah that we have given you this sharia that has been given to you khudu ma atainakum bi quwwatin wasma'u and keep listening qalu sami'na wa asaina the usual word after sami'na is ata'na they should have said we have listened and we have accepted we listen and we accept and we submit but now they change the word ata'na to asaina now that was the mischief in them they said we listen and we disobeyed we listen and we rejected qalu sami'na wa asaina wa ushribu fi qulubihim al-ijl and this worship and sanctification of the kaf went down deep into their hearts be kufrihim due to their disbelief qul bi sama ya'murukum bihi imanukum in kuntum mu'minin tell them what how bad is the thing which your iman is teaching you if you are you claim mu'min to be mu'min is this the attitude that the iman should take you have been worshiping kaf qul in kanat lakum ad-daru al-akhirah inda Allah khalisatan min duni an-nas fatamannu al-mawt in kuntum sadiqin say to them o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you really think that the house of the hereafter is reserved for you leaving others others of humanity they said we are the exclusive you know we hold exclusive rights over paradise over jannah just as we think today we are the exclusive you know right holders and each one of each one of us thinks that he has a reserved seat in jannah because he is a muslim because by mere accident of birth he was born to muslim parents that's all and such a big difference will happen for the eternal life and because due to accident of birth some was born hindu some was born christian they must go to the hell permanently and because we were born muslim it was not none of our choice none of our you know some exertion in it nothing of the sort no sacrifice but we claim to be to having the exclusive proprietary rights qul in kanat lakum ad-daru al-akhirah inda Allah khalisatan min duni an-nas if you really believe so then you should long for death not for this life if somebody really thinks if somebody really is convinced that he has a place in paradise will he like to live in this world for even a single day a simple logic if he is convinced qul in kanat lakum ad-daru al-akhirah inda Allah khalisatan min duni an-nas fatamannu al-mawt in kuntum sadiqin if you are really truthful if you really believe in it then you should long for death wala yatamannahu abadan this is the comment from allah subhanahu wa taala and they are never going to long for death 
And none of us wants to go there, because we know what we have sent before us. وَلَا يَتَمَنَّى هُوَ بَدَمْ بِمَا قَدَمَ تَعْدِيهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ And Allah very well knows these evil doers, these unjust people. وَلَا تَجِدَنَّ هُمْ أَحْرَسَ النَّاسِ عَلَى هَيَا And you will find them, definitely, surely, the greediest people for this life. فَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا Even more greedy than these people, the idolaters, the pagan Arabs. Yamadu ahadu humla yamaru al fasana. Each one of them longs and wishes to be living in this world for a thousand years. Wama huwa bi muzahzihi min al azab ya yamar. Although even if someone someone's life here is very long. And he is granted a very long life here. This cannot save him from the fire of hell. If his deeds are bad, he will go there. Even if he dies after a thousand years, where will he go? He will go to the hell. So it's no escape. It's no saving. Wallahu basirum bima yamalun. And Allah is seeing what they are doing. Kul man kaan adu wal jibrila fa innu nazzalahu ala qalbik. Now as we have seen. Although they recognized Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they knew that Quran is true. They only disbelieved because Muhammad was not a Jew, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was not from amongst them, and they were angry. Why Allah subhanahu wa taala has snatched from us this institution of prophethood? It had been with us. This grace of Allah, this blessing of Allah, it was with us for at least fourteen hundred years. Why has it been snatched from us? Now the same, due to the same reason, they were angry with Jibril and Isaat was salam, because he brought the wahi to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is our enemy. Actually, now they became the enemies of Jibril. Just as you know, there has been a small section of Ahle Tashiyyo who are called Hurabia. They have the belief. Hazrat Mujaddid Al Fasani, Rabbatullah Alaihi, has mentioned them in his makatib, in his letters. They believe that actually prophethood was aimed for Hazrat Ali, Razi Allah Taala, not for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jibril by mistake took the wahi to Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was by mistake only, because the spirits and souls of Ali and Muhammad were very similar. Therefore, he just was mistaken. He couldn't recognize. Actually, the wahi was meant for Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and mistakenly Jibril took it to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. But for till this, that is their belief. The same was the case with the Jews. They thought that it is actually the the action of Jibril, the decision of Jibril, that he took that wahi that was meant for some one of us. To Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the progeny of Ismail. Ul man kana duwa le Jibril, fa inna hu nazzala hu ala qalbi ka bi iznillah. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whosoever is an enemy to Jibril, he must know that he has sent down, brought down this wahi to your heart, O Muhammad, with the permission and command of Allah subhanahu wa taala, not in his own. Musad de kalle ma baina yadeh. And this has been sent down, confirming that which is present with them before it. That is Torah and Injil, wa hudam wa bushra al muaminin, and it is the guidance and it is the glad tidings for the all the muaminin for all who believe. Man kana adu wa lillahi wa malaikatihi. Whosoever is an enemy to Allah and His angels, wa rusulihi and His messengers and prophets, wa jibril wa mikala. And Jibreel and Mikael, fa inna Allah adu wal lil kafirin, 
he should know that Allah is enemy to all such disbelievers. They are actually challenging Allah. They are getting the enmity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reward. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ And we have sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these clear ayat. وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَى الْفَاسِقُونَ And nobody except the transgressors or rebellious in nature will disbelieve these ayat. These are so clear and so very self-evident that only those who are rebellious in nature, they will only dis disbelieve them. أَوَكُلَّمَا أَحَدُوا أَحَدًا نَبَذَهُ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ Is it not that whenever they ratified a treaty, ratified a covenant, نَبَذَهُ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ A group from them, a part from them, they throw, threw it away, threw it aside. بَلَكْ سَرُهُمْ لَا يُمِنُونَ But most of them don't believe actually. They are in a community of Bani Israel. They are a race. It's the racial religion. All people who belong to that race think that they are Jews. They are Mormons. While ever, only a few of them are real Mormons. Aksarahum la yuminun. Most of them, the great majority of them, don't have that faith. The same case is with us today. Out of the billion, more than a billion Muslims, how many have real faith? Real conviction. Real belief in Allah and the hereafter and the day of judgment and the institution of Wahi. How many of us? So that is that was the case of the former Ummah. Al Aksarahum la yuminun. Walama jahu rasulu min indillah. And when a messenger from Allah came to them, Musaddiqul lima ma'ahum. Again the same verse. Confirming that which was already present with them, that is Torah and Injil. نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِنَ الَّذِينَ هُوتُ الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَعَزُهُ رَهِمْ A party, a group of those who were given the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before this Qur'an, they threw this book, this new book of Allah, Qur'an, on their backs. كَنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ As if they don't know, they don't recognize. Although they knew, they recognized. يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاهُمْ They recognized it just as they recognized their own sons. But they apparently took the attitude of throwing it away. No, 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 nothing. It's nothing. So actually, this, that was their apparent attitude. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَقْلُوا شَيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ Now, if you leave something that is correct, then necessarily something wrong comes in its place. When they gave up following the book of Allah, they started pursuing other occult sciences. Sorcery, magic, all these things, you know, that are very common among some Muslims also, the ignorant Muslim also. So, Taviz, Gande, sorcery and magic and this and that. So, these become, you know, articles of interest with those people who don't have the real deen before them. What Tabahu, when they threw back on their backs the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real guidance, what did they pursue? وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَقْلُوا شَيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ And they followed, followed what the shayateen, they were pursuing or reciting in the days of the kingdom of Solomon, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَاكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا All this magic you will find goes in the name of Sulaiman, نَخْشِ سُلَيْمَانِ You know the ta'weez. As if all these things, you know, they originated from Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam. Quran says, no, wa ma kafara Sulaiman. This sorcery and magic, it is kufr. How could Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam commit kufr? Wa ma kafara Sulaiman, wa lakin na shayateen a kafaru. This was the shayateen. During his days, because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the control over jinns. And among the jinns, there were Muslims also and shayateen also. So although they were under the control of Suleiman, but they had their own creed, they, were, they had their own privileges, priorities, and they spread among the, the, the Jews of those days their own teachings and their own practices. And this is how this magic and sorcery, you know, that permeated the whole Jewish society. 
And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when something wrong, you know, becomes prevalent in a society, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that society to some big test and trial. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down two angels, Harut and Marut. In Babylon. And that was the days of the captivity of the Jews. When Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed Jerusalem and took so many of them as captives to Babylonia, Babel. And there actually, during that captivity period, the sorcery and magic and all these things, these occult sciences, they became very prevalent. And these both angels in the form of men, they never taught anybody this, that sihr and magic and sorcery, but they said beforehand, Innama nahnu fitnatun. We are a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are a trial for you. Fala takfur. You don't commit kufr. You don't try to learn this sihr, this magic and this sorcery. minhuma. Despite this warning from those angels, they learned from them, ma yufarriquna bihi bainal mare wa zawjihi. That thing with which they could separate the husband from the wife. Separation, causing separation between the wives and the husbands. Although the real fact is that they couldn't do any harm to anybody except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can happen without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an article of faith. No food can be can do any good to you, no medicine can do any good to you without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the things, you know, they have all the minerals and all the compounds, they have their own properties. But these properties can't come into actual effect without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even magic, by itself it cannot do anything, but with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa biznillah wa yata'allamuna ma yadurruhum. And they used to learn from them what harmed them. Wala yanfa'uhum. And was not beneficial to them. Wala qad alemu. Although they very well knew, it was made plain to them, it was clear to them in Torah. لَمَنِ اشْتَرَاهُ مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ Whosoever will pursue this sorcery and magic, whosoever will purchase it, whosoever will adopt it, for him there is no share in the hereafter. مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ وَبِيسَ مَا شَرَوْا بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ But indeed, it was very bad for which they sold their own souls. Law kanu yalamun. Only if they could know. Actually, they didn't know what they are doing, what harm they are doing to themselves by taking to these pursuits, by adopting these lines and these attitudes. They were actually throwing themselves with their own hands into the fire of hell. Walau annahum amanu, and had they came to believe. If they had the real belief, if they, real, if they really believed, la masubatum min indillahi khair, then the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have been much better for them. Had they stuck to the right path, had they followed the book of Allah instead of these practices of shayateen, this magic and sorcery, instead of these things, had they followed the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had they followed the truth and the straight path, la masubatu min in the khair, then the reward that they would have got from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have been much better, much better. Law kanu ya'lamun, only if they could know, only if they had the real knowledge. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Azim, wa nafani wa yakum bil ayat wa zik al hakim. Allahu akbar. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, 
A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.